Hmm. I have a monitor to review and I need just the right game to test its limits with. Ah, I got it. Yeah. What's good with it? Today we're taking a look at the E27B from Scepter. This monitor sits firmly in that price to performance sweet spot that we love to see. For about 350 US, you get a 27 inch 1440p IPS panel that can be set to 144 hertz. In recent years, these panels have become way more appealing to gamers who also like to do a bit of light productivity work, but we'll deep dive into that a little bit later. Taking it out of the box, it is VESA compatible, so you can attach it to an arm of your choice, but the included ergonomic stand offers more than enough flexibility. You can adjust the height, swivel up and down, side to side, and even rotate it to set it to a portrait mode. Now this is a welcome addition at this price point, and I prefer the more standard base than the panels that have the long extended feet. On the back, there is some of that pointless monitor RGB that is just not bright enough to make a difference. Now I would suggest getting some sort of light strip or bars that can provide you that backlit RGB glow that you so desire. Also on the back, you have an interesting array of input options. There's one display port and three HDMI. Two of the HDMI ports are 1.4, which is good enough for last gen consoles. And while it's not the desired 2.1, the HDMI 2.0 along with the display port option will give you that requisite 144 hertz capability. Here's where you can also find the controls for the menu. Now me personally, I'd prefer a joystick or some sort of OSD app, but by now we should all be familiar with buttons. The menu is pretty straightforward. Adjust the settings to how you like and get your game on. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the power port. There is an accompanying headphone jack to go along with the built-in speakers, but for the love of your audio, I suggest to either get some headphones or a nice set of speakers and just not use the built-in sound at all. Now before we go too far, I want to let you know that I like to do my monitor reviews with the out of the box settings to give you the average user experience. Turning it on, you get a nice, bright, vivid image. The bezels are thin enough, but you'll still notice them. Also, this is a flat panel, so if you like a thick, curvy monitor, you're going to have to look elsewhere. Now this is an IPS screen, and one of the benefits of it being IPS is that you should get more accurate colors, as this boasts 135% sRGB and 92% DCI-P3. In my use between gaming and some video watching, nothing seemed flagrantly off-putting about the colors. I'm sure if you wanted to calibrate it, you could get an even better image to work with. Watching YouTube videos or even movies in Plex was more than enjoyable, and though I ignored it harder than most people ignore the do not blow warning on N64 cartridges, it does have HDR for those who want to um not ignore it, but Windows HDR is still trash, so I wouldn't waste my time with it. Now when it comes to gaming, I'm so addicted to high refresh rate play that I noticed it immediately when you first turn on the monitor and it isn't set to 144 hertz in Windows settings. Side note, why don't all monitors set themselves to the highest refresh rate possible right when you connect them out of the box? But I digress. I was impressed with the lack of ghosting and sharp images during gameplay. I spent a lot of time playing COD and FPS shooters just fly on a panel like this. Well, if you have the power to push them to the limit, with the included AMD FreeSync Premium, you get that low latency variable refresh rate that will improve most gaming experiences. Now they claim a one millisecond response time, but on most monitors, it's a bit of marketing hype as you have to use the most aggressive overdrive mode that induces artifacting that to me, just isn't worth it. Also, your experience may vary, but I didn't notice much backlight bleed, but for some people, this monitor may be a bit too bright for dark scenes in a dark room. As for some light editing, I didn't notice any drastic temperature changes that would throw my colors off when I went into my grading situation. 
Now, when you add up the pros and cons, for me, this is a pretty attractive offer at this price point. The RGB on the back is a bit of gimmicky trash, and like most monitors, the speakers should only be used as an absolute necessity. But honestly, I really don't have too many gripes. You get a very nice image that is versatile enough to game, watch your favorite content, and even edit your blog series destined to take over YouTube. If you're looking for a panel that has a lot of advanced features for a less than advanced price, you might want to get Scepter. one more chance like Biggie Smalls. <sighs> I'm sorry for that, man. I'm going to get up out of here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Also, make sure you check the link in the description so you can get the most up-to-date price and the accurate information. I'm going to get up out of here. It's your Ken Folk Dookie. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And never forget to holler at your boy.